Hi, everybody. My name is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics, and I'm answering questions. So Nikolai Lorimer, who has been a fan for a while, watched my videos, we've interacted before. Thanks, Nikolai. Gave me $14.99. It's a very interesting donation. Did you actually do that? Or that, that's what maybe was left after it took its fees? Um, great video. Okay, so I, I talked about seating distance in your home theater, and you said great video, something I've been thinking about, balancing the best viewing angle versus best sound. You don't talk much about choosing the seating distance and getting it in the best position relative to room modes. I wonder if measuring the base response while moving the seats forward or back to make sure the primary seating position is not in a bad null would be something to add to the mix in addition to optimizing viewing angles. I'm thinking this would be one of the first things to do, after which would be placing the surrounds in Atmos locations. Seems this balancing act is pretty complicated and involved. Well, actually, it's not. You don't need to move the seats. All you have to do is move the microphone. Then you can move the seats afterwards. The seats don't have such an effect on the modes to matter. Um, it's nice to have the seats in there for measurements. They're like they have no effect, but moving the seat back and forth, especially with excuse me, connected rows like this would be a little bit silly. But a couple things. So first, RP22 from Cedia is a design best practices, and it's all about a very important concept that should apply to DIYers just as much as the professionals. And that is, you should never be focusing on designing a theater from the standpoint of seeing what happens after the fact. So what I mean by that is you should never go into this and say, well, I don't know where, it, like I see people do this a lot. They're like, I'm going to design the theater. I'm going to put a screen up there. I'm going to place the speakers. And then I'm going to, I'm going to project the image on a wall and I'm going to figure out what looks good to me. And then I'm going to buy a screen based on that. At least for designers, that's not a good idea. And for DIYers, it's not, in my opinion, the best way to go either. You want to be able to go into the design cohesively with everything thought out ahead of time and optimize. So like viewing angles should be something that you calculate and then you pick your screen based on that. Um, and seating position often, the way it works is actually we look at the width of the room and we figure out how big a screen relative to the projector we're going to be able to use we can get in there. Once we've figured out how big a screen we can get in there, we then put the seats where they're going to go based on the viewing angle we're trying to achieve. And um, then there are some best practices. So one of them is don't stick the seats right in the middle of the room because that midpoint is where there's a mode, a length mode problem um, that tends to be the worst possible uh, place to sit. So you put it forward of that mode, behind that mode, and there's room ratios that are used to figure that out. So there's another thing, though. The modern approach that we use to addressing room modes, whether it's Welty's approach that he talks about, you know, we call the Harmon approach often, with the subwoofers in the corners or the midpoints, and then optimizing everything and using sound field management or something like that. There's the MSO software as well. That kind of negates the need to really care about this. And then the newer stuff from Direct Art and um, the one I like better at the moment, which is Trinos uh, waveforming, totally negates it. Like there's just no modal issues of any concern anymore because it's canceling out those reflections that caused the modes in the first place. So it goes back to like, you just don't need to worry about that anymore. Now we need to worry about the more important stuff. But there is an interesting addition here. So like I said, that we can, we can just get out of our heads in systems that are set up that way. In systems where you're just trying to optimize for one seat, um, and there are modal issues, then yeah, you need to figure out how to place the sub such that you don't activate that mode and or move the seat so it's not in a bad position. But these other approaches kind of negate all of it. Um, but there's the issue of where to put the seats, not just for viewing angles for best sound. So my screen is too small. Uh, not really, but like it's... RP23 is the standard that's going to come out for video. And they've established, I have to go look at where we landed because it keeps changing. I mean, at one point it was like 75 degrees viewing angle was optimal for level four. Now it's, I think, down to 50 degrees. It might be 55, but I think it's 50. But in the past, we had been pushing for like 40, 42 degrees as sort of a more optimal viewing angle. Maybe as small as 38, I think. Was it SIMT was 38 and THX was 42, something like that. I should know this by heart, but I don't. In any case, something in that range. So that, that would have, in my viewing angle, if I push my seat back, to where I originally had planned things, and then for the width that I chose, I would be probably right around 45, I think. And um, that viewing angle with the seat set up like that is not bad. But when they started pushing these wider viewing angles, I started to think to myself that I've not watched a lot of movies in theaters that I've lived with at such a wide viewing angle, like 55, 60 degrees. 
And I was curious what it would be like to have that kind of a viewing angle. But my screen is fixed, obviously. I can't just go put a new screen up. And the width of my screen was defined by how wide I made my baffle wall. Because while on the right side, I could go all the way to the wall if I wanted to. On the left side, there's a door that has to swing open. And the wall has to come out about 12 inches. Uh, it's going to increase when I change the subwoofers. And so I had to make a decision about what I was going to do in terms of the wall size and the screen. And so the decision I made was just to make it narrower. And I probably could go, I actually am thinking in the future, I'm going to redo this. I'm going to make the wall about six inches wider on each side, which would be the absolute limit where the door wouldn't hit. But that gives me an extra foot. And then I think I can go to a narrower bezel screen. Um, so the frame part, the black velvet frame part right now, I think is four inches and I could take it down probably to two inches or something like that. And then that would give me another four, maybe somewhere between four and six inches of extra screen width on, on top of the extra foot. So I can make my screen a good bit bigger. I'd have to change my projector for sure if I'm going to do that. But anyway, because I can't change all that, I push the seats forward quite a bit. I think two and a half feet, something like that, in order to get the viewing angle up. So I do this, and you guys tell me, go for it. So I'm going to do it right now. So that, you know, you can figure out the viewing angle pretty easily by figuring out the half angle. It's just a right triangle calculation, right? So... I'm currently, I think, nine feet from the screen, maybe eight. Well, camera's going to get blurry when I do this. Sorry, guys. I'm going to move around. Let's measure, right? This is what you're supposed to do. So, tape measure, right? So I'm going to put this so that it hits the screen. And this is not exactly the right way to do it. Yeah, so it's a, it's 10 feet. And then if I was to go, sorry guys, I you can't see my head, this is kind of goofy. If I was to go all the way back to where it was supposed to go, we would be at 12 feet. So it's two feet. Let me just confirm that that's what I'm getting here. Yep, on the nose, two feet. So I moved it forward two feet. So we're going to do a right triangle calculation right now while I move back to my C. And if we do that right triangle calculation, you can see on my phone maybe, can you? Kinda, probably not. Um, we got A, B, and C as the dimensions, and we need to figure out um, the angle A, alpha, I should say. So A is currently 10 feet. My screen is 114 inches wide, which we need to convert. So, so let's go. Uh, 10 feet is 120 inches. We'll do it all in inches. And, oops, I did this. That's dimension B. And then, if the screen is 114 inches wide, we need to, to get half of that. So, that would be 57 inches, right? And then we calculate the angle. So, the angle here. It's 25.4 degrees, so 50 degrees. Call it 51, which is in the realm of what we said we were shooting for. And I'm actually a little bit forward of where I measured, so it probably is between 51 and 52, what I was thinking it was. Now, if we take the 120, which is that distance, and we add two feet, that's an extra 24 inches, we get to 144 inches, 12 feet, right? Recalculate that. And we get 21.6, which is 43 degrees. Like right around what I told you. So, um, so you know, we can see where we're falling into these optimized viewing angles. But so I ran into an issue when I pushed it forward like that, trying to get to that 52 degrees, which was that it put me more in the near field of the speakers. And it so I was so focused on trying to change the viewing angle by simply moving the chairs forward and not on the fact that to get the larger viewing angle but to maintain the acoustic design of the room, I needed to keep the seats where they were and go to a, a larger screen. And so I changed the sound of the room when I did that. Now, again, this was all just an experiment. And it's fun to do this stuff. And if you guys like to play around yourself, you should do the same thing because it's neat to hear the difference. It's all different. And there's not really a right or a wrong. But 
Gene came over and Shane uh, Rich from RBH came over and they both separate occasions, having not really conversed with each other about this specific thing, they commented that they felt like my seats were too close to the screen. And I kept saying, well, viewing angle wise, it's not because the viewing angle is the new standard that we're coming up with. And it doesn't really matter how close the, the seats are to the screen. It's the viewing angle that matters. But they were like, no, no, no. It just sounds like it's too, too close. So Shane was the one who had the technical explanation ability that I needed to like be like, all right, I get what you're saying. And that was, he said, it sounds to, to me kind of like when I sit too close and I'm too in the near field of the speaker. And what I realized was that he was describing the change in the sound when you're closer in the direct to reflected ratio. So when you're farther away from your speakers, there's a higher reflected sound ratio than when you're closer to your speakers. And in that, in that, that's everything else being held constant. So I have lots of diffusion and absorption in the room and the RT time isn't too low. It's a little lower than I'd like it to be, but it's not too low. It's definitely not a dead room. Um, but by pushing myself forward, what I had done was made it so the direct sound ratio was much higher to the reflected sound ratio than it had been before by changing those two feet. And so we, you know, when we design rooms, we always think about these things. And what I did here, I would not do for a client. You know, I wouldn't sit there and be like, well, you know, why don't you slide your seats for it? Because it changes the sound. I would pick an optimal seating position based on getting the direct reflected sound ratio the way I would want it to be, which actually favors sitting back from the speakers a good bit. Um, I would prefer to sit in the back third of the room than the front, or the, the, I should say, I guess, than the middle third for getting the right ratio of direct reflected sound. And if I had to put seats more in that middle third, I probably would then focus on adding a lot more diffusion to the room to maintain the right ratio that I'm looking for. Um, but in my room, I had designed it to be in the back third of the room and then shifted everything forward to, to experiment with this idea and left it that way because it's a pain in the butt to keep changing it. Um, and then realized that while everything sounds really, really good, you know, when you get into those last like 2% kind of stuff that matters for sound, one of the things I changed that people who know the difference were starting to key into was I changed the direct to reflected sound ratio such that it was favoring a more direct sound field. And it just didn't sound quite as good as it did. It sounded like the room was a little too dead in a, in a sense because of putting it more forward like that. And um, so I guess the, to, to Nikolai's whole point here, like I said, I don't worry so much about these room mode issues anymore because there's tricks we have for fixing them. What I worry about is making sure the seats are in the right position for the best sound quality. And one of the things to think about is that you want to get your screen to a size that allows you for the seats when they're in the right position to get the right viewing angle. That's the balancing act. And often the right seated position tends to be farther back from the speakers than we typically would think. It's also one of the reasons why I don't think LCD TVs are really big enough right now. So as I mentioned, my screen is 114 inches wide. Remember that professionally we use wide, not diagonal. And I'm always really bad at memorizing how this works out. But so... Let me do a calculation to figure out what that would mean in a diagonal 16.9 screen. So 100, um, no, what, no. Sorry, I, I think it's 132. Let's try that. This calculator doesn't work the way I thought it would. Yeah, 130. Getting close. Hundred and thirty one inches. So I have roughly a hundred and thirty one inch diagonal screen. And I'm sitting ten feet back, and my viewing angle at ten feet back is fifty degrees. So or fifty-two degrees. So if we go with fifty two or fifty one, fifty one degrees. So if we go with fifty one as the target that we're gonna shoot for, if you're using like a hundred inch screen, you would end up having to sit even closer and it would screw up the sound because you're like I said, your direct to reflected sound ratio then becomes very dominated by direct sound. And so those TVs, I've heard people say that like, oh, they're big enough now to be used in theaters. I mean, any TV is big enough to be used in a theater. You could always shove yourself, you know, two feet from the screen if you wanted to. But for rooms like this, where you want to have an eight to 10 foot distance at least, and really 10 to 12 foot being more optimal for larger speakers, especially, 
and rooms of the size. I mean, a room, my room is uh, like 18 and a half, almost 19 feet long. For that distance, 12 feet from the screen is a very sensible uh, listening distance. And my, my screen sticks out about a foot from the from that too. So that dimension I gave you is to the hard walls, not the screen. So um, the, the, these LCDs are not really big enough yet. Uh, they need to get bigger. They need to be, it's you know, 130 to 150 inches minimum. And like I said, I want to make mine bigger. So my my goal actually, when I redo the room and upgrade everything, is to try to go to a screen. I think I told you I'm going to make it even wider yet. So I'm going to add about a foot. Um, so it's going to take me to be like 145 inches diagonal. Yeah, 145 inches diagonal, roughly. So 145, 150 inch diagonal screen um, for a 12 foot listening distance is what I'm suggesting to get the optimal viewing angle that I want while maintaining the speakers at the right distance back. I mean, there are some 150 inch LCD TVs, but there aren't many. Those are really, really uncommon sizes. OLED, um, I don't think has that big yet. And then for micro LEDs, the direct view LED TVs, certainly you can do that, but you've got to get the right pixel pitch to get 4K resolution at that. The cost is really, really high for such TVs and the black levels often are not very good. So to me, not still not a better option necessarily. You know, they're brighter. And with OLEDs, the blacks are better. But otherwise, projectors still have a lot of advantages. And then the sound one is huge because you can put the speakers behind the screen. Anyway, so thanks, Nikolai. I keep answering similar questions, but I appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel. Um, that's really helpful. These donations are super helpful, and I appreciate that. And uh, keep making comments, you guys. Uh, apparently, YouTube likes it. I got an email about it. So thanks.